You're listening to the Decentered Media Podcast with me, Rob Watson. Conversations about community media. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow on Instagram and Twitter at Decentered Media. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and this is a podcast uh, about community communications, community media um, stuff that we do as uh, non professionals. DIY, uh, where we talk about uh, our community lives and the kind of things that are um, done by ordinary people outside of the media industries. So it's that grassroots, uh, community radio, community newspapers, all those, all those kind of things. So what I want to talk with you about today is uh, the idea of co-production and co-creation and I'll probably use the terms interchangeably although somebody who is more expert than I am will pull me up on that um, so the concept of co-production uh, why it's an essential part of community media and what we can do to uh, benefit and gain uh, from its use and the principles of why it's used talking of which if you uh, are uh, able to support the Decentered Media podcast and the work that I do around community media. It is entirely self-funded. Um, it's all about uh, trying to share what knowledge and experience I've got, uh, and it would be appreciated if anybody who is grateful. I, I would be very grateful if anybody <coughs> supports me. I've, uh, uh, I should read out a list of the Patreon supporters we've got. Uh, that's often what people do on podcasts these days. Uh, however, um, any any help would be uh, as as for gratefully received from as little as three pounds a month. It pays for things like hosting and licensing costs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just go to patreon.com slash decentered media. Uh, and with that, you will get access to uh, the forum that we have and to the fortnightly meetups that we do on a Wednesday evening from 6.30. Uh, so as I say, uh, patreon.com slash decentered media. Anyway, to talk about... Um, community media co-production uh, is is to kind of really go into the the depths i suppose of of community media and th- and, and back to some of the founding principles of, of what it means how it works what it's about what it does and you know how we benefit from this because it is a very distinct approach to media to community media and and i use the terms community media and community focused communications interchangeably to kind of open up the uh the the concept it's kind of that the 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 purpose is to uh inform help develop and support uh people who live in or identify with specific communities and that might be based on place it might be based on um religious identity uh there are many many reasons why people establish community media projects and it can come in many they can come in many different formats so really this is kind of what the point of community media is for in terms of attracting volunteers so most excuse me most community media groups are volunteer run and managed and there's a you know there's really some kind of uh, sometimes there are um uh, how do what do you say? The, sometimes there are preconceptions and assumptions that people have about participation, uh, and what the purpose of participation is. And given that community radio, for example, is you know has a legal obligation to support and provide access, uh, it really needs to be thought through carefully in terms of what the the nature of that access and participation is. And it's not you know it's not just a kind of a um, what's the phrase I'm looking for? It's not just something which is a gesture which is um, offered to people, but it's meaningful and it makes a real difference. And the whole idea of kind of agency uh, underpinning the volunteering, the sense that you're part of the decision-making process. Now, there's there's 
differences in terms of the way that we value uh, different types of contributions, but there's also differences in terms of the opportunities that people have and that we can provide within different community media types of settings, but also the outcomes that we would expect from that. And I think it's important to think about participation and co-production in terms of um, equality, uh, equality, the right to have access, the right to participate, the right to have your voice heard. These are the main themes of community media and community radio. Um, so co-production and co-creation, <coughs> excuse me, and are kind of the, the slightly different, uh, but I'm not entirely sure what the difference is. I suppose it, it's one of those things that comes out in practice. Kind of co-creation is, uh, you know, the kind of coming up of models and ideas and developing the content. And the co-production can be things like, and this this is a this this isn't a good example, but you know, setting up the studios and running and maintaining the infrastructure. Um, that that might be a rule of thumb that we could apply. I'm sure there are lots of different examples that would contradict that, and it might be. I'm not really interested in trying to define and separate out the two things. I think the two are incredibly valuable. I think the role that people play, as long as it is about participating and contributing, uh, can be doing anything. Some people don't want to make programmes or write articles or take photographs. Some people are very happy doing the account or, you know, kind of giving a studio a lick of, lick of paint. Uh, you know, so it's that support uh, approach, uh, supportive approach that, is really what this focuses on. So we've got to think about community uh, media on the basis of the strategies that we put in place that enable that co-production, that enable that co-creation and how they arise from, if you like, the ground up. Uh, so the, it's, it's one of the principles of co-production and co-creation, although it's a kind of phrase that's used a lot in other circumstances, uh, is, you know, Co, you know, for something to be genuinely co-productive or co-creative, uh, where does it emerge from? Who who organises it? And can, if you like, a top-down professionalised organisation uh, uh, really facilitate genuine uh, genuine forms of of co-creation? What does that mean? What do those terms mean? And this is really just a, a kind of quick overview of them and and ask a few questions about it because the the, the you know it's it, it it's it might be fine to look at these things in theory and think about them in theory but in practice probably something different uh, occurs and we should always uh, ask the question about what happens in practice but the range of community media is often about you know kind of the very many different types of content that people can create and share so you you're starting from the point of view of getting people in to help and assist to make content uh, to you know to to produce content and that can come in many different forms and it can come in many different types so you know a, a writing a blog taking a photograph and each of them are valuable um, and each of them um, have, have a useful role within the life of any kind of project because you know, we, it's very seldom now that you just have a writing project, that you just have a photography project. It's not uncommon, but it's, it's, it's now it's kind of you, you're working across forms of media now <coughs> because it's easier to, to, to share them and you're across different platforms. So you've got to think about how this works out in terms of you know, in practice, how the different platforms influence this. But there's some principles that kind of tie in with, it doesn't matter what format you work in with it, what, plat what type of media you're working within, but there's some principles about um, bringing people along to join in the process and to feel welcome and to feel cared for and respected in that process. And, and it's kind of, you know, the, 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 the level of trust. Now, one thing I've said on many occasions is that community media travels at the speed of trust. And if nobody trusts our media, then uh, then then obviously uh, we live in a time when our media is, is highly questioned by people. Um, 
so that, you know that makes it harder to to do things and if, if there isn't a sense of community there reciprocal uh, embedded sense of community then that makes it harder as well so you're working with you know the the conditions you're working in the condi- condition the social conditions as you find them but you're also working in the perceived conditions which uh, our media might suggest that there is very little focus or very little um you know, it's a doggy dog out world out there, and that there's very little sense of community, and, and the the actual experience might be completely different. So we're trying to separate out, and that's one of the skills that you learn from being involved in community media is that you learn to understand how that media uh, expectations and media profile, and you know that these things can be built up, and you take responsibility for what you produce yourself. Uh, so that trust element is 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 a big big part of. Uh, co-creation in and co-production in community media but then also is the way that we address barriers to engagement so such as um, you know access to technical platforms <clears throat> many people in my experience tell me that oh they're not very good technologically uh, and then five minutes later they're off uh, doing things because it's the technology is relatively simple and straightforward and I always uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a great believer in um you've got to start somewhere. So the best thing that you can do is to start by learning what your mistakes are uh, and then you can improve from that. But if you don't do anything, if you wait until you've got the perfect skills, then you're never going to start the process and you're never going to share anything with other people and you never discover anything about yourself in that process because what you're doing is you're holding back uh, and you're not actually starting to gain some insight into what the process feels like from within. And that's one of the challenges, I think, that the, the differences with a co-creative and a co-productive model is that the people who are engaged in facilitating and supporting this approach also recognise that there is an internal process that people have to go through, many of whom have gone through those processes themselves, maybe not in identical ways, but in similar ways. Um, And, you know, it's that kind of discovering what it's like to be something from the inside, uh, rather than merely looking at something from the outside and saying, well, if, if I only have a camera, if I only have the right jacket, if I only have the right kind of hat, uh, then I can be a reporter, you know, the Mac, I can be a reporter. Well, that's got nothing to do with being a reporter. That's to do with a media cliche of what the persona of the, re- the reporter is supposed to be about. What do you need to be a reporter? Well, you need to be, you know, interested or nosy and accurate Um that's what you need to be uh, a, a reporter and to be able to capture things uh, in a timely manner and get on with writing you know writing and producing a story so we have these expectations that are built up in our in, in the culture uh, which maybe need to be demystified and changed so one of the things and we draw on Raymond Williams uh, the famous uh, cultural uh, theorist said said you know to, to democratize our media we need to professionalize it and there is an awful lot of expectation around media where people think that it is somehow a, a kind of professional a professional approach to something which is wrapped in some kind of mystique and and it, it, it really isn't you know most of it is just very most of it is lots of people working on something doing very small things uh, but most of the time it's just you know it, it, it's fairly straightforward telling a story can you sit down have a conversation and relate a story that is for most people a good starting point of any kind of community uh, communication and engagement Um, we can add things to that obviously and 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 we can have fun have fun and be creative in the way that we we do it so but it's about addressing the barriers to engagement that you know maybe are perceived and hold people back but also uh, our, our actual barriers, you know, kind of um, the way that we use equipment, the way that we access studios, uh, all those kind of things that, you know, aren't necessarily, uh, <clears throat> um, aren't necessarily something that we uh, are sometimes mindful of. But we, we, once we start to go through the process of figuring out how this works, then then, then they come to mind through that, and that suggests that the that there is a uh, is often talked about in terms of uh, certainly equality is that there's a kind of power dynamic in the co-creative and co-produ- pr- co-production process, 
on the on the way that we think about you know the facilitator and organizer has more knowledge than the participants and volunteers who come in and and, and are willing to give their time and on occasions are you know kind of yes the uh you know the, the fact that somebody's getting paid for something to facilitate something rather than just giving up their time for free for something can be a challenge for a lot of people and you know we we live in a period here in the uk where you know times are tough and the cost of living crisis is biting into people's capacity to do things that are are, you know not uh, strictly paid for um but even in even in a a well-funded and you know kind of well-managed community engagement uh, scenario there is still a dynamic there between those people who've set something up and those people who are coming along for the ride if you like and think you know i think about it it's kind of like a magical mystery tour metaphor where you know somebody has to organize the bus somebody has to uh, uh make sure that the tires are inflated that the tank is full that the seat belts are all in place properly and then most people will come along and get on the bus and they'll bring their sweets and pop and they'll enjoy the ride uh, and they'll have a sing along uh, as they as they do it but what they're not doing is worrying too much about the infrastructure of the bus and that's participation but it's a separate kind of participation as opposed to being the 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 people who organize things so what we can't do is let the organizing take too much out of the trip so having every you know controlling everybody if you like uh and we you know choosing a specific direction well who who on that bus uh chooses where the direction is of of, you know where you're going to go to where you're going to visit uh who has the power to you know choose the route um you know okay you're on the bus you're using the platform uh who chooses which songs are going to be sung you know so there's a whole load of questions and i won't murder the analogy any any more than i need to uh but this is you know it's quite an effort to 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 develop this set of ideas based around a democratic and inclusive model of participation uh, because what you're looking for with co-production and co-creation is you're looking for people to um, not just fit in with um, ideas that you, the organisers have brought with them, but to be in a situation where they're able to feel confident, people are able to feel confident about projecting and establishing their own ideas. So, you know, we, you want to produce a newspaper or a magazine or you want to produce a certain kind of podcast or you want to do a certain kind of photos, then that implies <clears throat> that somebody's got an idea of what it is that they want to originate. And, and respecting that and, you know, kind of recognising that that might start at a very... Uh, simple level basic level um but we value the contribution that everybody makes to that process and that journey and everybody maybe moves at a different speed and and they apply their learning and understanding in different ways but as long as they're on that journey of finding out something about themselves themselves and finding ways to communicate that effectively uh, then i think that, that you know that that is the purpose there's no more of a purpose than that that you know kind of uh enabling people inspiring people wherever you want to phrase it as to actually uh make some content and to have a go and then you know if if they've enjoyed it to carry on making content so there's a a few things that we can do to kind of um orient this and kind of finding the right voices that are uh, is it is it is can be a fraught process. So sometimes what you uh, get are the uh, the people who have something to say or wish to put themselves in a position where they are the person who has the status to say something, and this is just part of life. You know there are, are people who do that, but does that make them good community communicators? Uh, and and so it's kind of this process is about if you like finding out where the real community voices as opposed to the self-appointed community voices because we see a lot of that uh, where you know certain spokespeople for different communities are trotted out on occasions to to say something for everybody and it 
and on, you know, most of the time that might be right. You know, that might that they they might be very good at speaking on behalf of, uh, you know, kind of different social groups, but we shouldn't assume that those people have that right to do that in perpetuity. There may be other people who have uh, just as valid points to get across and to say. So that's a big part of it. And, and, you know, often what can happen is when you're setting up a training, community media training session, you get the, the same people coming along as the usual suspects. And, you know, it's very difficult to deal with that because you can only deal with the people who turn up and it's the people who aren't turning up to it that we, we are worried about. And we have to find ways to engage with people in, in different ways to get different people there. Uh, then it's about collaborative content development, and that this is you know, people. Bring, I remember once having an argument. I, I didn't have an argument actually. It, it, it tried to diffuse this from becoming an argument, uh, where I did a training session about community radio and, and and what community radio can and could be. And one of the people that was working with that day in the workshop um, was adamant that. You know, this is not how they do things on radio too. What I was suggesting was not radio because this is not how they do this on Jeremy Vine or, you know, whatever programme that this person was listening to. Anyway, in the afternoon, I got them to record some conversations and uh, talk about where they, uh, how they, uh, their journey, how they'd arrived, just, just that day, how they'd arrived at where the workshop was and record them on their phones and then... L- Swap, do, swap over and re- with a partner swap over and record something else and then listen back to them and at the towards the end of the session I kind of given it about 40 minutes I was trying to pull everybody together and they wouldn't stop listening to their things they said oh no no we want to carry on listening to these I said that radio what you what you discovered is that regardless of the way that it's recorded somebody is sharing something and you're listening to it and that's radio and that's you know it doesn't have to be super well produced it doesn't have to be professionalized it doesn't have to have bells and whistles in it it can just be somebody simply relating a story so that collaborative approach is really important to get right if we're going to find that something emerges spontaneously if we're telling people that it has to fit in in certain ways uh, and certain prescriptive ways some people are suited to that some people aren't and it's about helping people to find their own voice within that process so this requires a lot of trust and you have to build relationships with people so that they feel that they are able to um respond within a kind of they they know that they've got some backup you know that they know that what they're doing is not going to be ridiculed uh that (coughs) that they know that the uh, the stories they share, the observations they make, uh, the ideas that they you know attempt to communicate are going to be valued, and that trust building over long term relationships is really vital. Unfortunately, most of our funding projects are very very short term term. And it's very difficult to establish those long-term relationships, um, whether it's with an organisation or, or whether it's with individuals or groups of people, because by the time you've established the the, the, the the initial set of relationships, it's time to pack up and move on to something else. And that's really you know very, very challenging. And that's right across the civic, social, art sectors that these uh, challenges about short-termism uh, are, are very frustrating. The other thing is about uh, editorial policies, who's in charge of deciding what the story is, you know, is about, how the story uh, should be uh, covered, what the key factors are that define the story and what the uh, the kind of verification process uh, that you that fits in with that story. So um, who has the power uh, to make those choices? Uh, with community radio, we're in the position where people have to know what the Ofcom broadcast code is. But for a community newspaper, you or or a you know a, a social media group, a Facebook group, or something, uh, then you're in a different situation because social media can be um, very um, much very much more loose in the way that uh, people share things. However, you could quickly annoy your intended community if you're posting 
the wrong things about the wrong topic uh, in the wrong way. And so you've got to have some understanding of what those choices are that enable you to fit with people's expectations, not not you know, kind of fixed with those expectations, but that you're aware of them and that you work with the with the grain rather than against it. Uh, so those editorial policy, but there's also having an editorial policy itself implies accountability, which is one of the things that you know enables uh, for us to uh, uh, establish a sense of trust. Then it's about um, you know making sure that you've got accessible media platforms. So. Uh, I usually typically resort to asking people to use their phones because you know, modern smartphones are, are way, way, way more sophisticated and able to capture audio and video and stuff like that. So there's, it's a great resource that most people carry around with them now. But it might be that you use another equipment as well, but also access to things like the distribution platform, you know, the, 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 the team that sends out a a newspaper, a local newspaper, the team of volunteers that delivers them and puts them through people's doors. You know, that's a that's a, a, a social resource that's been established over time, which is incredibly fragile uh, and incredibly valuable. Um, and you can produce as many copies of a newspaper that you want, but if you can't get them out to people, then, you know, they, they, you know so that kind of infrastructure, whilst it's not you know, international streaming conglomerates and satellite broadcasters, uh, you know, worrying about how they're distributing their, 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 their content. You do need a trusted platform on which to, whether it's a radio station or a community newspaper or a, a, a Facebook group, you need something where people understand that the platform, uh, uh, there is a role to play within supporting and developing that platform. Uh, and that having access to that platform is an essential part you can't restrict people um because you want it to be a shared experience uh, and then so things like evaluating uh, the project allocating resources all of these are should be geared towards understanding uh, what the the uh, challenges have been in making sure that this participative co-creative co-produced approach is actually supported well and 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 works and and that so it's not a you know it's not a straightforward way of um uh creating media because you kind of add in a few extra layers and and these are quite difficult layers so participatory methodologies uh, are largely driven by whether this is in in civic engagement or social engagement. It's really about you know kind of looking at the you know the the asset based model, the ABCD model, which looks at what the assets and skills are within a community and says, can we harness these and can we use them? Because every community has a different kind of level of skills, level level history. Some communities are much more hesitant about getting involved and being part of something because there's histor- historical animosity and there's a lack of trust. Uh, there's also the sense that people are ignored or you might be open to ridicule. There's also, you know, the, and we've talked about in past episodes of the podcast, we've talked about uh, symbolic forms of engagement and how that shapes how people think and what you can do with media. So you know it's it's not a straightforward um, process, but the the expectation that this is about opening up that process and including people in that process and learning as you go along is is really essential. And there's kind of a few things that we can think about in terms of um, you know kind of best practice you know it's not a great term but you know good practice and and in terms of thinking about what the uh, motivation is for people to get involved in something that's that's really kind of a lot of the time I spend my time trying to understand and come to a point where I'm clear about what somebody's motivation is for wanting to get involved and uh, I can work with people um, under quite difficult circumstances if their motivation is 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 clear and consistent that they are there to do something which is of positive social value to others um whereas when you you know kind of lose interest with people when they're really there to drive forward their own objectives and their own ego and that does that doesn't uh, fit well with the collaborative nature of uh community media because it's kind of if you want to do that you know go and start your own 
YouTube channel, have your own podcast. You know, it's 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 very easy to do. If you want some tips and hints, I can I can easily do that. Um, but you know, is it is it led by your own ego? Is it led by uh, you know the or are or you what you're trying to do is bring other people through the process. And there's good examples and bad examples of that everywhere. And, and I, 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 I'm no saint when it comes to this either. So, but it's just, you know, it's a question of having a go. But what you're trying to do is kind of make sure that the practices and the way that you go about creating content and managing the platform are inclusive. And that what you're not doing is because, you know, the, the, the sense of marginalization that people have, it's, it's, you know, mo- mo- it, it's it's often rolled out as a kind of cliche. Or we 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 are a voice for marginalised groups, and I've probably contributed to this idea. But you know, the the, the number of people who are effectively sidelined in our you know the assumptions that are made to get narrower and narrower and narrower that the people that are being served are of you know kind of economic and social value, and you know because people don't have a strong voice and the power imbalances in our political system and our uh, resource allocation system are very can be very you know they can be uh, fraught with difficulty in terms of acceptance and getting people to understand and that you know I'm I'm a believer in self determination in the, in this respect and I think you know the 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 concentration and the homogenization of our media is bad for us because what we will benefit from is having the diversity of supply, uh, which is also encourages the diversity of ac- action and activity, um, as long as it's done in an accountable way. Uh, so it's it's kind of we're using a mixed set of methods here, and those participatory methods are looking at really kind of separating out the. The, the way that we direct and manage a project from the tools that we use and that giving people the opportunity to find out what it's like to put together a project and to work on something and to find a good way of doing things not the best way but to find a good way of doing something so that they can achieve something and then you move forward and then you keep moving forward you know if we're not producing content we're not moving forward and we're in a, we're in a, a communications uh, you know everybody involved at this wants to get something out uh, and wants to be producing something that's the aim i would hope and and we should never think of it as a one-off it's part of a process and it's part of a process of learning and development uh, so we we do this by uh, kind of addressing uh, experiential knowledge you know kind of taking people's experience working in other areas and parts of their lives and kind of applying that in in a way to media uh, so find out where people are, how they understand what they're doing, uh, and and what they can contribute. And if it's you know, it's the lack of judgment about that, uh, because the you know a lot of professionalised media, mainstream, corporate, commercial media, is very much about people telling you how wonderful they are, and their egos are overflowing uh, with self praise. Um, but you know other people can do this they're just not the kind of people who've got the you know the egos that uh <clears throat> that that project themselves forward in this way um and that's the role then for bringing other people forward and looking at ways to make sure that people who are from marginalized or, or overlooked communities ignored communities uh, really feel confident about having a go and there are so many small knocks that can just destabilize you know and it's like the, the grind uh, and it's like you know but uh, you know just listening to people so just recording somebody and listening to them and you know letting them work out some issues and st- ideas or, or concerns is the start might be the starting point and just being a good listener and capturing that is a very very healthy way to to, to start this process so we're looking at the you know the kind of there's there's a number of different approaches we can focus on the process uh, of this and and participatory uh, co-creative uh, and co-produced uh, media does you know needs to think about the process and and it, but it's a very specific and defined type of process which is based on inclusion and equitable access those kind of things and and outcomes uh, and and it's the notion that you're fostering a sense of shared uh, storytelling shared engagement that there is a 
a, an affinity between the people involved uh, that uh, maybe they didn't know that they had, uh, but it's kind of coalesced. You know, sometimes we we overthink these things and think it needs to. Certainly, when you're filling in funding applications, that we think these things need to be planned and you need to know specifically who you're talking to and who you're talking about. But in the process of putting together and supporting a group of people who are learning to tell stories and to communicate, it forms a community itself. Um, you know, and sometimes we overthink these things and say, well, we're, we're going to deal with X, Y, and Z. And it's like, well, you know, let's not deal with the things that we think we know. Let's deal with the things that we kind of, you know, we've no idea that we don't know anything about them. Um, so we've got to be flexible and adaptable. And we've got to look at this from a, you know, those ongoing sustainable relationships that need to be nurtured uh, and managed and, and that's the fragile part and that's the community bonding part as well as the community but so community media has this great ability to both bond um, people to a recognized community that they are identified with or by uh, and also to bridge with other communities and to do other tasks and engage with other people that's the social dynamic of bonding and bridging and that we're we're in that position where we're thinking about the kind of networks that we we become part of and that we start to circulate and move between different types of people and organizations because in learning to create media you're learning to communicate which naturally draws you to attention of different people and you do an ex photography exhibi exhibition you put a radio program out you're putting yourself out there into the world uh, and people will have opinions about that and views about that and it's you know kind of having a support network that helps you to deal with both the positive and the negative views is very helpful but also you know just the fact that you're out there um and and you're not being you know it, you're not being spoken by you know what, what's being said about you uh is not being spoken for you but it's you articulating a realistic voice for yourself um so <clears throat> comes back to this notion of equality and value i think the, the you know my, my my notion of equality is uh a, equality the fact that we value everybody equally uh it, because that doesn't then mean that you expect everybody to uh have equality of opportunity uh though it's as we should be pushing for that and that should be good because there are some you know what do we mean by that equality of opportunity well you know there, there is a, a, a quality of opportunity for everybody to be a, a bricklayer well we don't see many women in the roles of bricklayers and vice versa with other roles you know um, but if the opportunity is there uh, there shouldn't be any unnecessary barriers and of course the media industries are replete with sexism and racism and and people have been uh, unnecessarily hindered uh, when they could have been brilliant broadcasters, program makers, storytellers, all the rest of it. So, you know, my equality of opportunity um, has to be grounded in equality of value of those in every individual first um, so that people can be engaged and get involved um, and that you see something and so that you're working with people who come ac from across different um, parts of society as well. I remember once being involved in a, a, a photography project and the driving uh, uh, ethos of the person who was running it was that the, the, the way the project was set up is that you could have you know very rich people sat next to very poor people in the same session. And the way you wanted to structure it was that it, it wasn't there to address their inequality. But in the process, it brought people together who would who could then form a common understanding and you know benefit from that interaction. Um, and yes, while there might be strategic structural problems about inequality there that you know neither neither could determine or solve, they at least got to interact. And we live in a society now where you know rich and poor don't interact in the UK in the way that they did. You know we've we've got that social segregation. You know 
pe- people who go, I'm gonna put it like this, it's cr- it's crude, but people who go to Primark don't go to John Lewis and vice versa. I'm sure there are a lot of people who do. Uh, so you know, please don't write in and uh, and tell me that I'm wrong. But it's, as an analogy, you know, it's like that's. Uh, one way to think about this and what we need is that more common experience commonality of experience and that participation in a project is a good way of doing that so this then kind of you know, brings us to the point where we're thinking about e- equality of outcomes you know what is it we want to get we want to get a number of programs a number of articles written a number of photographs published how do we get those published do we only deal with the person who's got the most expensive camera or who had the most expensive education or who you know is articulate and well-mannered uh, and have the right social mores or you know and the right networks or are we look what are we looking for and i think that's the you know the, the fundamental uh independent question that really does underpin this is that each of us has the capacity to be inventive and creative and to see something that we can share with others which provides some insight and uh, enables people to have a better understanding of the world of themselves of their community uh, so it's that kind of individual response within a social system uh, which which might be you know mitigating which might be working against them from actually expressing that and to have the confidence to 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 behave in a way and to accept that you you know the p- people can be creative not everybody uh, uh might want to see themselves as that uh but you know enough people who want to take part in these kinds of activities uh the first yeah you know, we we use it as the phrase you know kind of uh is it permission that we need to give people or is it inspiration and I'm on the, the latter part of this, is that we need to find ways, I'm not very good at this, but we need to find ways to inspire people to come forward, to talk for themselves, to represent their view, uh, and also to you know to have that respected and for it to be appreciated. And this works both ways. It's a reciprocal process. You can't go around demanding that yours is the only point of view that is heard. Uh, and there needs to be something which is much more, you know, kind of a... a, a, a an engagement between people and that's the focus of community media is that kind of deliberative common engagement with each other uh, through and with our media so what we're not just doing is projecting at people but we're also you know we're creating content which for all intents and purposes uh, uh, might be quite simple, crude, whatever phrase that you, you, you know, value you might ascribe to it. But what it does is it brings a group of people together to get to, you know, to form a bond and a friendship and a relationship based on their activities, developing those ideas and sharing their uh, passion for those ideas. Uh, and having the same kind of values that come out of that process. So for me, that's what community media kind of is is focused on. Um, okay, I probably could talk about this for many more days. Uh, if you want to uh, engage in the conversation about this, uh, you know, send me a message. I'm on Twitter and Instagram and various other forms of social media at decentered media the website is decentered.co.uk as i say i am on patreon and i would appreciate any kind of contribution that people would be uh, willing to offer uh, starting from three pounds a month because uh, it just helps to you know cover some of the basic costs and um and allows me to kind of book out some time to to put you know, to do some thinking about this and to write some stuff up and to make a podcast that i can share and hopefully we can take it to the next level and you know have more of a participative co-creative space for ourselves where we you know kind of uh, can facilitate you know, further discussion as well so so thanks to all the people who already do support me uh, and i'm looking forward to any new supporters that come along as well anyway uh wonderful to uh chat this week and hopefully uh the weather's not too cold for you it's going to be uh, minus two or three over the next few nights and about two or three degrees during the daytime so wrap up warm uh visit your local library Uh, keep warm by reading books in your local library Uh, probably the best advice i've got at the moment and listen to your local community radio stations and read your local community news 
papers and magazines and projects and go and see the community exhibitions at your local art galleries anyway until next time thanks very much you've been listening to the decentered media podcast with me rob watson to find out more go to decentered.co.uk or follow on twitter and instagram at decentered media